I've never been one to shy away from lanthanum chloride, a product used in our hobby to bind up and export phosphate from a reef tank. Not only did I feel like I'd found the magic elixir the first time I used some, I've been a huge advocate for more than a decade. A few months ago at MACNA, two little fishies introduced their version to the attendees, named Fosban L. Fosban has been a powdered version of GFO for a long time using a Fosban reactor or similar device. Fosban L is not just a liquid additive, it's a bottle of concentrated lanthanum chloride. This really isn't a review, it's more about my thoughts on this topic. I've been using it now for quite a few sessions and I've enjoyed the same excellent results as I have with other similar products such as Fosbuster Pro by Carib C and Phosphate RX by Blue Life USA. You have to mix Fosban L with RODI water to create a solution that you're going to drip into your system. I've seen and heard heavy warnings about using it very, very, very slowly, dripping it into a super fine micron sock. The finest micron sock available at this time that I'm familiar with is a 10 micron sock. In comparison, the average filter sock is 100 microns or 200 microns, so you have to seek out a 10 micron sock when dosing this product. And when they say very slowly, they mean it. Basically, in quotes, they say it should be dripped ever so slowly into a filter sock over a period of days, not minutes, not hours, which is exceedingly cautious to me. But then again, anytime anyone utters the word lanthanum, people seem to come out of the woodwork stating how careful you need to be. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but they're never referring to phosphate or rex when they say that, because I've asked them to be specific about what they're talking about. I'm personally not nearly that cautious with this product as they are directing. Perhaps being a 20-year hobbyist that's used some form of lanthanum since 2005 until now has erased any concern on my part, not to mention how many times my livestock has been exposed to it without any socks to trap it whatsoever. Let's say I use this product every 10 weeks. That's 5 times a year. 5 treatments times 13 years is 65 sessions, and I'd say realistically I've probably used it more than 75 times. The bulk of those dosings, which is about 60, were using Phosphate RX because I just love that product. You don't need a reactor, nor deal with all the steps involved in utilizing GFO. You simply drip it into the skimmer section of your sump or right into the display tank, and a few hours later the water is clear and the phosphate has been exported by Protein Skimmer. Blue Life started selling 10 micron socks. Since I'd been dosing for over 10 years without using one, I asked what the reason for this was. Primarily, it was stated it was for safety concerns, but to me the benefit is really to help avoid the cloud in your display tank in the first place, simply by helping remove it more quickly from the water column. When you think of aquariums on display to the general public, they have to have crystal clear water all day every day, so using a 10 micron sock assures the water clarity remains intact even when the treatment is going on in the background. I've used such a sock a handful of times, but realistically for my reef it just simply seems unnecessary. Enter Fosban L. With all the warnings I'd read, I wondered if I was being too casual about this. I've used the product a few times, in two different systems. So here are my calculations. So I took 100 milliliters of Fosban L and combined it with 200 milliliters of RODI water to make a total of 300 milliliters of solution. This is what they recommend. Then I had to refer to the recipe, which is 5 milliliters of the mixed solution per 20 gallons of liquid volume in my system would reduce phosphates by 1.0 ppm. My total system volume is 450 liquid gallons. This accounts for the water in the display tank of the 400 gallon, the water in the 60 gallon anemone cube, and the water in the sump and refugium. I've also considered and subtracted for the sand bed and rock that displaces some of the water, as well as the fact that the inside of each aquarium is actually less than what the tank size is labeled. That's why I figure the water volume is 450 gallons and not more. So now we get to do some math. If we're supposed to be using doses that equal 20 gallons, I'm looking at 450 gallons divided by 20 gallons equals 22.5 doses of 5 milliliters. So 22.5 times 5 milliliters equals 112.5 milliliters total needed to drop my phosphates 1.0 ppm. My reef tends to be 0.5 ppm or less, hence I only need 50% of the recommended dose because I'm not trying to drop it by 1.0 ppm. 
I chose to dose 60 milliliters on several different occasions and each time with excellent results. I happened to have a handy 60 milliliter syringe and pressed the plunger gradually to trickle the solution into an area of high flow in my reef over a period of about two minutes. The water got cloudy initially and then it cleared up after a few hours. No sock was used. I've dosed this solution at night and I've dosed it during the daytime. I don't really believe it makes a difference what time of day you use these types of products, but my preference is at night when my fish are asleep so I don't have to look at the white cloudy tank. Throughout this video I've been adding lanthanum chloride to the tank drop by drop and I'm just about done. I wanted you to also notice that my fish are just swimming around like it's no big deal. And that is probably because I'm not overdosing the product into my reef. If you're new to using a product like this or you're worried, I would recommend sticking to aquarium based products and not just picking something up at a pool supplier or a hardware store. We want to make sure that our livestock is safe. Now within a few hours my tank had cleared up and everything was back to its normal pretty self. At the time of shooting this video I had tested the phosphates right before I added the product and I was at 0.75 ppm and when I was all done it was less than 0.1 so it had definitely brought them down significantly which is a good thing. Many hobbyists and experts recommend keeping your phosphates down low. I tend to let them rise over time and then I bring them back down and then they rise over time and I bring them back down and I have done this roller coaster system for well 14-15 years and it has worked very well for me. Others have stated that they have a hard time getting phosphates lower when they're quite low in their aquarium already and in that case I don't think you need to be adding lanthanum to your tank at all. Once your phosphates are down nice and low you can keep them down low using GFO in a reactor but I've personally not gone that route and I've found that I did not need it. Corals definitely benefit from some nitrate and phosphate in the water but you don't want these levels to get so high that it causes stunted growth and in the case of my mixed reef it seems to be enjoying just the right amounts on a regular basis. And while my reef is not perfect it definitely grows and makes me happy and that is really at the end of the day what matters most to me. If you feel like this is something that you would like to try out and you've got some experience in the hobby already and you're not starting with a brand new tank that's barren and actually has a you know a mixed reef filled up with stuff and you're dealing with phosphates lanthanum chloride can be the direction to go to help keep the phosphates under control. Let's uh, review. You want to make sure that you keep your dose at a weaker amount than what's recommended to make sure your tank can handle it. It's recommended that you dose it directly into a filter sock. If you don't want to trickle it in manually you could use a dosing pump and in the case of my tank where I needed 60 milliliters I could have 60 milliliters trickle in 10 milliliters at a time over a period of a few hours using a dosing pump. Instead I just get the job done, move on with my life and let the protein skimmer pull it out. I've not seen the need for a filter sock to protect my reef, I've not lost fish using lanthanum chloride and I don't really understand why that happens to some people. So that is why I thought I'd do this video and kind of let you just see how everything swam through the solution and didn't seem freaked out and wasn't gasping and wasn't you know stranded down on the sand bed. And finally if everything is working well in your tank right now then don't change anything. Don't do what I'm doing here because obviously your tank is doing quite well the way you've got it set up. This hobby has a lot of different ways to accomplish the same thing which I know can be frustrating. I try to provide some guidelines of what has worked for me and I try to explain some of the pros and cons along the way so that way you don't get any surprises. If you have questions after watching this video and my Phosphate RX video, feel free to ask me and I'll be happy to assist in any way I can. The purpose of this channel is to educate and to give you a little bit of eye candy, and I hope that this video did just that for you today. If you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and give me a like. Happy reefing!